people's opinion of you is none of your business. I have lots of haters. They on the internet all the time. But who are they though? They don't even know me. People who are haters on the internet, I call them thumb gangsters. They just typing shit. Their little punk has got a private page. They saying shit about, they don't even know me. So I don't, I don't give them no energy. I give haters no energy. Steve ain't this, he think he this. You don't even know me. So I just, I just keep going through. And, but then I'll tell you something too. Haters motivate me. Because when they talking about me, that means I'm doing something. If you have no haters, if you don't have any haters, you need to get some. <laughs> you need to get some haters. Because if you have no haters, eh, you ain't doing nothing, man. There's times I felt like giving up. I mean, no matter who you are, if you have a goal in life, everybody has a turn back moment. Everybody has a crossroad. If, if you haven't been at it, it's coming. You can either decide to continue or to quit. To go forward or to go back. You're going to always have that decision. But what I did was... I made all of my dreams bigger than my fears. So when I felt like quitting, the results would have been devastating to the goal I was trying to attain. See, I was so sick of being poor. My motivation was I was just exhausted from poverty. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't do this no more. I was sick of living in my car. I've been living in my car for three years. I was sick of not having money. I was sick of not having a bathroom, a front door. And so for me to quit, and see, that's what people do. People quit when it's at their hardest moment. But if it's at your hardest moment, why would you quit? Somebody sent me a plaque one time that said, if you're going through hell, why stop there? I mean, think about it. If you're going through hell, why stop there? You in hell. Move, keep going. And I just could not see myself not being successful. And so since I was already at my lowest point, how much lower can I go? I figured if I quit, I'd go lower than that. And I didn't need that. So I just, you know, but my faith, my mother being a Sunday school teacher, teaching me about prayer and God, that was really helpful to me, you know. So I just, uh, I wanted it. I just, you know, you gotta, you, can I tell you something? If you really want to be successful, you gotta have a lot of dog in you. You got to be mean sometimes because life ain't fair. Life is hard, man. It is not fair. Like you have happened to you that just, you go, man, why this happened? Because life ain't fair. But life ain't fair to nobody. You just got to fight through, man. You got you to bite back sometimes. It's like haters. When you get haters, you know, if you give up, you know exactly what's going to happen nothing but if you can just manage to wake up tomorrow and just see what tomorrow brings if it don't bring what you want tomorrow if you can wake up one more day and see what tomorrow then brings because here's the one thing about it the reason God wakes you up in the morning is because he still has something for you if God was through with you, you wouldn't wake up no more. So as long as you keep waking up, it's because God has something for you. So as long as I wake up, I just look for it. I say, okay, God, what is it today? It might be a challenge. It might be a test. Or it might be the win. But either way, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. And if I wake up tomorrow, that's a good sign that he ain't through with me yet. So I just keep waking up and keep going, man. Never ever give up. You know why people do what they do? The people who go after their stuff, what makes it worth it? It's got to be your passion. You got to love it, ladies and gentlemen. You got to love it. It's got to be what you are supposed to do. You want to sing, and even though they want to invite you to Carnegie Hall, you're going to sing to anybody that listen to you, including singing to yourself. I used to talk to my plants when nobody else would listen to me.
You got to write even if no one published your book, write because that was given to you to do. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Learn. Do whatever is required. Just go out there. It's possible you can get what you want. It's necessary. If you want it, you got to go into action. You got to be willing to experiment. You got to be willing to fail and to succeed. You got to be willing to form and develop new relationships. It's you. It's on you. You got to make that happen. Nobody's going to bring it to you on a silver platter and say, here's your dream manifested. No, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. Yes, right. And it's worth it. People ask, hey, man, you know, it's, you know, these kids, man, it's rough dealing with them. That's right. That's right. You think peer pressure happened overnight? We went through peer pressure. I remember as a kid, some guys said, hey, Les, me and another fellow named Willie Lowell, we were going home. Hey, man, we're going down to Goose, man, and knock off a grocery store. I said, look here, I don't want no part of that. I'll see y'all later. So y'all chicken. I said, that's all right, you say whatever you want. Low stop. I'm not chicken, man. Don't call me chicken. Now, why don't you come? We didn't even ask you to come into place, man. All you do is just drive the car, that's all. I don't know how to drive that good. Well, we're trying to get Les to come. He's chicken. Hey, I'm not driving nothing, all right? Willie, don't care about what they say, man. Leave him alone. You want to go do it? You find somebody else to drive or you drive yourself. Come on, Willie, man. Pull him, he stop. I ain't chicken. All I got to do is drive? Yeah, I said, Willie, that sounds simple, man. Don't go, man. He went. And the next day, we read the newspaper where when they robbed the store, robber came, they, when they came out running to a car, the merchant, the man who owned the store came out just shooting wildly and he hit the driver in the head. So peer pressure didn't just start in the 90s or the 80s. It's difficult, it's challenging for kids right now. And it's gonna take um, some easy, simple methods to help bring them out of this madness, this insanity, no. Is it hard? Yes. Let's look at what we've been doing. What has worked? What has not worked? Let's look at where we want to go. What is it that we want to produce? What is it that we want to create for our young people? And as we think about that, start experimenting with different methods and techniques to create and to produce that. And begin to believe that it's possible through our commitment, through our vision, through our determination, our relentlessness. Because of our belief, it's possible that we can reduce the teenage homicide rate, the teenage pregnancy rate, the dropout rate, that it's possible looking at what kind of world are they going to be in. As we look at the global economy, that as we begin to use our collective will and genius and resources, it's possible that we can create an educational system that not only will test their minds with, with information and facts and figures, but will teach them how to think and be creative. And, what does it mean to be a human being and to value human life? And how do you make relationships work? How do you bounce back from adversity? It's possible that we can give them a curriculum that will give their lives a sense of purpose and direction and meaning and teach them how to begin to know and operate on a higher level of being where they become assets to our society rather than liabilities. What if we leave here with that kind of consciousness that it's possible as opposed to saying we have to write this generation off that it's possible that we were born for such a time as this and that that maybe someone here has the idea or the method or some plan of action or an approach that can resolve many of the problems that we're facing with young people today whatever we have to do to save our children it's worth it So that brings me to the final step, that it's necessary for us to begin to look at the future and know that it's possible that we can have our dream. Yes, it is. Other people have done it, then we can do it. We fail a lot of times. Well, a lot of other folks fail, and eventually they came back and they succeeded. So it's possible we can have what we want. And we know that we want to get it. It's necessary that we align ourselves with people that think like we do. It's necessary we get negative, do-nothing people out of our lives. It's necessary we never stop learning and growing and developing ourselves. It's necessary that we never give up, 
We know that it's you, it's me. It's being responsible for our stuff and deciding that we're going to keep on keeping on, that we're going to find a way to win or find a way to make it happen. And we know it's hard. It's not going to be a picnic. Yes, it's hard. It's hard. And we will do it hard. And once it's, we do it hard and we go through it, we realize it was worth it. And once you discover it was worth it, it is done. It's done. <laughs>